Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You know all those apps you're probably using right now, the ones you are logged into with a monthly subscription faster than you can say when a lock in. You fell victim to one of the classic blunders. Yeah, those are SaaS or software as a service. Think Netflix, when you're watching your weekends away, Spotify, serenading your commute, maybe even that Slack workspace where 90% of the channels are just cat GIFs. Essentially, SaaS is like renting software instead of owning it. Your precious data lives in some mystical cloud realm. A server tirelessly orchestrates the digital dance with all the CRUD magic. For the uninitiated, CRUD means create, read, update, and delete. And you get a shiny interface to play with, be it a sleek mobile app, a trusty desktop program, or just a web page that looks suspiciously different on every browser. If you ask about the last decade, we were all living in what I call it the sassy wars. But hold your horses, tech enthusiasts, because the winds of change are blowing and they smell distinctly of silicon and intelligence. According to none other than Microsoft's Satya Nadella, the SaaS party might be winding down, all thanks to the rise of those brainy newcomers, AI agents. Now the internet being the internet, the headlines might have screamed, SaaS is dead, sell your stocks, like it's the tech apocalypse. But let's dissect what big man is actually laying down straight from the source. He's talking about a fundamental shift in how we architect applications. Remember when we moved from everything living on our local machine to the client server model? Well, buckle up buttercups because we might be on the verge of another tectonic shift. Think about our trusty Uber app again. At its heart, it's a real-time data hub with a server playing matchmaker between the riders and the drivers. The apps on both ends showing you maps and handling bookings. Server and client doing the tango, constantly chatting to keep everyone in sync. The software engineers here will argue, oh, they are using Firebase. No, they are using WebSockets directly. Some poor souls will say, no, Uber client app is directly connected via Kafka PubSub. But that's not the point. All of it is still SaaS. Now imagine a future where your phone is just smarter, like it has a built-in AI sidekick, a super-powered agent, uh, let's say Gemini. You just tell it, yo agent, snag me a ride to the airport. The AI maestro could conjure up a personalized UI on the fly. No need to download and update a dedicated Uber app. It speaks your language, knows your location, haggles with other AI agents representing drivers, orchestrates the whole trip, and keeps everyone in the loop, all while tapping into the same underlying data pool. But what happens to the traditional server and the separate driver and passenger apps? They might just become relics of a bygone era, or at least morph into something unrecognizable. As Satya eloquently puts it, the brains of the operation all that intricate business logic we painstakingly coded into servers and clients is migrating to the AI tier. And once those AI overlords, well, I mean agents, are running the show, the need for all the traditional backend and frontend scaffolding, please note, I called it scaffolding, and its current form could diminish significantly. We might see backends become leaner, meaner, and more focused on data, while the frontend becomes more dynamic and generated on demand by the AI. Well, this isn't just some wild tinfoil hat theory, folks. We are already witnessing the early sparks of the revolution with AI assistants that can juggle tasks across multiple apps. Think about Gemini, potentially booking your flights, adding them to your calendar, and even suggesting a packing list based on the weather at your destination all by intelligently interacting with different backends through its AI smarts. Now, hold on a minute. This doesn't mean all you brilliant software engineers should start polishing your resumes for a career in competitive thumb wrestling, but not yet anyway. What it does signify is a seismic shift in our development focus. We'll likely be spending less time wrestling with UI frameworks and crafting intricate API endpoints, and more time nurturing and training these intelligent AI agents and architecting robust data infrastructures. It's a wake up call to level up our skills for a brave new world of agent-centric computing. The front-end and back-end dance we have known for years? Well, this choreography is about to get a whole lot more AI-infused. Well, of course, there are still corners of the tech universe where this immediate AI impact might be less dramatic. Areas like operating system development and game development the, these are beasts with their own unique sets of challenges. While you could argue that even kernel wrangling is just sophisticated file I.O. based on silicon specs, well, that's a debate for another day, maybe with uh, more caffeine and fewer polite words. So is SaaS actually kicking the bucket? Maybe not a full-blown digital demise, but it's staring down the barrel of a major evolution. 
a metamorphosis driven by the ever increasing intelligence and autonomy of AI agents. Well, it's a thrilling, slightly terrifying, but undeniably transformative time to be in the tech arena right now. Well, what are your thoughts on the SaaS to agent evolution? Drop your predictions and spicy takes in the comments below. Stay curious, keep innovating. This is your host TB and you were watching the first episode of 100 GB of Decode. Thank you. Thank you.